know, most people who think about suicide don't attempt. Most people who attempt do not go on to attempt again. They live um, their life, they recover. Um, so we really work in communities to promote the belief and the knowledge that suicide is preventable, treatment works, and recovery is possible. So there are several trends that we're seeing right now. One is that the Minnesota suicide rate is increasing. We know that rural communities have a higher rate of suicide than urban communities. And then we also know that um, suicide rate is the second leading cause of death between the ages of 10 and 24. So we know that service members that are between the ages of 18 and 24, sometimes even 17 to 24, you know, are at risk for suicide. Being proactive in our mental health is something that I think um, our society doesn't think about um, very often. We take it for granted that we're doing well in our mental health until we're not. But if we think about, uh, specifically in the military, if we think about it as a muscle, you know, that is something we have to strengthen, that our mental wellness is very similar. And that if we never flex those muscles or if we never really think about our mental wellness, that unfortunately then, when something does occur that's not so great in our life, it's, it's kind of like a, a trying to do a push-up when you haven't been training. Um, it becomes a very challenging thing. I went through a bad divorce and I hit rock bottom basically. And uh, there's a few times where I should have not been here. And the people that were there were actually the ones I served with. It was more of an impact for me to get better when I heard one of the people that helped me tell me his story because it made me feel more comfortable inside that hey I'm not the only one and you know there's things out there there's people out there that will understand that other people don't. I think one of the things that's really hard for people is if it's not a suicide crisis, they wonder if they should even bring up the topic. And the answer to that is yes. Um, we know that as, as a mental illness takes hold for someone, they start to withdraw and they pull away from people. So if you recognize that someone you know, is isolated, um, isolating themselves, who are feeling helpless or hopeless, you know, who's uh, using drugs or alcohol, um, maybe who hasn't reported to drill or who's coming late all the time, you know, it's really about sitting down with that person and asking them what has happened versus what is wrong with you. So I think if you look at it from that perspective of really looking at that individual and kind of seeing what those warning signs are or what those invitations are, it really opens up the door for a conversation that is positive, you know, that is caring and that is supportive. If you're concerned about a loved one or a friend and someone says that they are feeling hopeless or they want to end their life, they don't think it's worth living, they're giving you the gift of having a conversation. They're opening themselves up to you. And the most important thing you can do is to just listen, let them know you hear them, and ask them if, they can get, if you can get them help. I actually started utilizing what the military was offering, the brotherhood, the, the, the family the military has. And after I started doing that, I started getting better, and then better, and better. And then soon, I was on, back on the promotion list. I, I found who is now my wife. Things just I started to get better. Most people don't want to die. They just don't know how to go forward. It's a hard thing to put on the table that you're thinking about ending your life. So if you kind of have an inkling, it doesn't hurt to ask. And if they are thinking that, more likely than not, they're gonna feel relief that you brought the conversation up. They're gonna feel like, oh, this is a place I can share. Um, so don't think by asking, you're putting a thought in their head. Asking actually saves lives. So when we're asking the question about suicide, we need to do it in a non-judgmental manner. Um, we need to ask directly. Um, with confidence and compassion. And I think by asking it in that way, we're showing that we care. A lot of times um, using the word like committed suicide 
is, is, you know, it's related to like crimes or sin. And it also really does place judgment on the person. So really looking at how we ask the question is really important. So asking directly, again, with confidence, um, and then also in a, in a caring manner is really showing that person that, hey, I'm here for you. You can have a conversation about breast cancer, you can have a conversation about prostate cancer, and people don't think twice about it, but you start talking about somebody having a mental health issue, and people go back to um, things 50 and 100 years ago. Um, they think that it's a nervous breakdown, and they, they, they put all of these words to it that are really shameful, and, and truthfully, um, stigma is about discrimination, and so we need to continue to work to get beyond that, to open up these conversations, have more dialogues, to let people know that it is okay to talk about mental health issues. People have called me at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I've gotten up and drove three hours for a 10 minute conversation. Or I've, you know, talked to somebody because I, I, I felt like something, you know, something was going on, but next thing I know, I got an email from that person like four months later saying that it was weird that I just said, hey, what's up? Because they were going through something and you know, so it got them through and now they're doing better. You can have a lot of life stressors that just add up to the point that you don't know how to get out from under the weight of it. And that's where we need to be talking more about how do we help people find hope, find help. And it doesn't always have to be mental health services. It can be help in financial stressors. It can be help in personal like relationship difficulties. It can be just the friend extending themselves in a time of difficulty and know that you're not alone. And that's what I hope we see more conversations about what every person can do to prevent suicide, not just have it be about mental health services fixing the situation. I think one of the most important things that people need to understand is that everyone has a role in preventing suicide. We can't just rely on it being a doctor or, or somebody in law enforcement that shows up to help. We can't rely on just a family member telling one person, hey, there's a problem here. It takes all of us, it takes a whole system of people to be able to prevent a suicide. But to, for that to happen, people have to be open to this. I just want people to understand it's the little things in life that they need to look at. And, you know, it's a hypocritical of me to get down on people that want to take their life or actually thinking about it because I went through it. But, you know, I told everybody there that, you know, everybody goes through something. Well, one thing or another, the best thing we got is to lean on each other.